Topping today's news, a young man employed with the government shot and killed in Yellow Elder. Police released stats on stolen cars and their connection to violent crimes. Coalition of Independents replaced Deputy Leader Maria Daxon. Mitchell tells the OAS more funding is needed and the U.S. Charge d'Affaires, Usha Pitts, ends her tour here in the Bahamas. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jerino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Police are actively searching for a gunman, the occupant of a small Japanese vehicle responsible for shooting and killing a 28-year-old male who was walking along Nelson Street in Yellow Elder Gardens on Monday afternoon. Police press liaison officer Chief Superintendent Chrysalyn Skippings shares the following details while on the scene yesterday. This afternoon we're actively searching for a male who shot and killed another male believed to be in his late 20s. Sometime around 4 p.m., the victim was walking along Nelson Street when a small Japanese vehicle pulled alongside and a male emerged with a high-powered weapon, opened fire on the victim, striking him multiple times. He succumbed to his injuries on scene. Again, we see a small Japanese vehicle and I make an appeal to members of the public, especially those persons who know that their residents or their neighbors do not possess small Japanese vehicles and you see a Japanese vehicle at the rear of someone's home or on a property, we're asking you to give us a call. We cannot allow these persons to continuously move around in these vehicles, creating havoc on our country. Mikhail Bonaby, the Member of Parliament for Mount Moriah, which includes Yellow Elder, was on the scene and confirmed that the victim was a hard-working junior mechanic at Beach and Parks and was shot and killed on his day off from work. Also on Monday, police and Defense Force officers from Operation Ceasefire removed another firearm and ammunition from the streets while in the Baines and Grantstown community, leading to the arrest of two juvenile males, both 17 years old. Investigations continue into that matter. Police Commissioner Clayton Fernander has revealed police recorded a 22% decrease in stolen vehicles in 2023 when compared to 2022. On Monday, Commissioner Fernander shared the 2023 crime statistics, noting a trend in stolen vehicles and their connection to violent crimes. As I indicated, the stolen vehicle is down and the vehicles of choice continue to be the Nissan vehicles, uh, the Honda Fit, the March vehicle, and also the Premier, uh, the Japanese vehicle. They continue to be uh, the vehicles of choice that are being stolen, and not only uh, being stolen, but used in the commission of a crime. Out of that 257 vehicles reported stolen, uh, we have recovered a total of 92. Uh, which represent a 36% uh, recovery of vehicles. Commissioner Fernandez says police continue their aggressive approach to locating stolen vehicles with special focus on Japanese model vehicles. He also said despite an apparent spike in carjackings this year, the unconfirmed statistics for 2024 point to a decrease in stolen vehicles when compared to the same time in 2023. Speaking at the Organization of American States meeting to commemorate Pan American Day and Pan American Week, Minister of Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell expressed pleasure on behalf of the government and the people of the Bahamas being a part of the Organization of American States whose membership continues to work together for development, although he said progress in the Americas has not been linear. Mr. Mitchell went on to list a number of major accomplishments by the OAS, but said there are some areas among member states that needs attention. It is not all sunny in the Americas, of course. Nothing in life is perfect. Ours is also a hemisphere where deep-rooted structural challenges remain. We are among the most unequal and most violent parts of the world, and there are increasingly worrying signs of democratic backsliding and undermining of basic human rights and equality in many of our countries. We continue to contend with old challenges such as the risk of conflict from regional border disputes. And here I reiterate our hemisphere's professed commitment to 
respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, the rule of law, and the virtue of preserving the hemisphere as a zone of peace. Mr. Mitchell spoke highly on the benefits and characteristics of the Pan-American states. However, he lamented the fact that the organization of American states lacks adequate funding. Despite the routine profession of our appreciation for the OAS, our talk as member states has not often matched our actions as we continue to underfinance the OAS, particularly in relation to the proliferation of mandates that we generate for it, Many of our countries have adopted a laissez-faire approach to meeting our financial obligations as member states in a timely and fulsome fashion. As a result, the capacity of the OAS in recent years to deliver on mandates has been constrained and in some cases has been severely compromised. We see this, for example, in the decline in regular financing afforded to OAS scholarships, which has historically been a flagship OAS program. Minister Mitchell, who also challenged the Organization of American States to play a greater role in coordinating humanitarian, security, and democratic efforts, as well as executing projects and programs that can bring much needed help and hope to member state Haiti. Mr. Mitchell was introduced by the Bahamas Ambassador to the United States, Mr. Wendell Jones. As political parties begin to gear up for the 2026 general elections, the Coalition of Independents, COI, selected a leadership team while ratifying its constitution during their one-day convention at the Marriott on Saturday. Party leader Lincoln Bain and national chairman Charlotte Green were unopposed, but there is a new deputy leader in the Coalition of Independents, Dr. Veronica McIver, the party's shadow minister of health. She replaces the outgoing deputy leader, Maria Daxon. They elected 16 national executive officers and three appointed officers. However, there is a buzz in some political circles that replacing former deputy leader Daxon has caused a stir in the COI. Meanwhile, COI looks to become a serious contender in the 2026 general elections using access to the nation's natural resources and stamping out corruption in politics as two of their major promises to the electorate. And finally in this segment, the Bahamas government, including Minister of Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell, bid farewell to U.S. Charge d'Affaires to the Bahamas Usha Pitts. The two met at the Bahamas Ministry of Foreign Affairs last week to exchange pleasantries and iron out a few final details between the two countries. Mrs. Pitts, a 26-year career diplomat for the United States, is on record saying that the Bahamas has been one of her most gratifying appointments, which began on New Year's Day in 2021. In the past, she has served in Russia, Cuba, Italy, Austria, Panama, and Brazil. Mrs. Pitts has been well received during her time here in the Bahamas and leaves after forming many long lasting bonds, both professionally and personally. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials. <laughs> 